Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Diane Karshner, your host, and I'm joined, as always, by Matt Silver, our senior pastor here at Experience Christian Church. Say hi, Matt. Say something Hello. wise. Say something wise to us, Matt. Oh, wow. Wise. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll save that for just a moment. Just a moment. You want to say something unwise right now? <laughs> that'll come out pretty, that'll come out easier. That'll come out also. Uh, the easier. unwise will, yeah. And then we'd have to start over and, you know, free film. Yeah, we won't do that. Okay. Well, welcome to our podcast. We have a treat for you today. Um, on Sunday, Matt uh, delivered a message on toxic influences, all those things that influence the way we think about ourselves, about our life, about our kids, all these things that keep bombarding us all the time and how to manage them or at least get them to fly in formation of some kind. Um, but we have a guest with us today, as you can see, if you're on our video, um, and her name is Cassidy Dunn. And she's joining us because I have met her about maybe a year ago when we first went into the pandemic. And that face that you see on the screen, and oh gosh, I hope you all see it. That smile just lit up the screen. And I just, I just uh, started following her on, her on her blog. I kind of stalked her for a while. I admitted to it um, when I was talking to her today. Um, but I just felt that it was a breath of fresh air and all the things, the horrible things we hear about the younger generation and how negative they are and how out of it they are. But I'll tell you, this girl is not out of it. And she's got a way of looking at the world that I think we all should get into. So Cassidy, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, where you're going to college, what you're studying, anything else you want to tell us to let us know who Cassidy Dunn is. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. First of all, I'm so excited to be on today. Um, but a little bit about me. I grew up in the downtown Cookville area. And I grew up with my mom, my grandma, and my uncle. So they were so amazing to grow up with. So it was just like the perfect childhood, I would say. Um, but I currently live in Chester Springs. And right now I am at Elizabethtown College and I'm studying business data science. So that's been really fun to be able to do. And I'm actually graduating in December. So wow. this year. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy that I'm graduating college this year. Um, but I am going to go into an MBA, hopefully. So not done with school quite yet. <laughs> so that's good to have some more. Um, but some fun things about me, because I thought I should share something fun, um, is that I am currently training for my second marathon. So I really love to run. That's super fun for me. And also this past summer, I think it was, the time is just, I don't know the time anymore. <laughs> But I think this past summer, I ran virtually across the country because the coronavirus kind of changed things up. But I got to raise awareness and money for young adults with cancer through the Ullman Foundation. And I was able to raise $11,500. <laughs> yeah, so that was just so exciting. And to see like the community come together with me and really be a part of it, I wasn't alone in that. So that was really cool. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing all that. Um, you said you were in business computer, business data science, basic business data science. And what is that? So basically, um, what I want to do is specifically go into business intelligence, which I think probably makes it Woo. confusing. Um, but I really love to analyze data and just see the impact it can have on companies. So sort of looking at what the business side of it, I get to really see that connection and see how I can help see what the data is that we already have in the companies, how that can be used to help in the future and see things like that. Wow, that's exciting stuff. Well, thank you, because <laughs> I think we need all of that. Thank you. So let me start with a question for Matt. Matt, on Sunday when you delivered your message, um, I was taken aback a little bit by the fact that you didn't go into a lot of detail about what we shouldn't watch or what we shouldn't get into reading or what we shouldn't be letting influence our lives from the social media particularly, but from all the input sources we have. Like for me, the Game of Thrones, I mentioned before, I had to stop watching. It got, got too violent, too sexual. Um, friends of mine, when the nine shades of gray or however many they were, when those books came out, they, they jumped all over. They thought they were really exciting and tindillating. And I read like two chapters and went, whoop, not for me. Um, so I knew that those kind of things I had to keep 
at arm's length, even though everybody was watching, everybody was reading it, but you didn't seem to get into much detail about what you thought was the no-no list for us. How come you didn't go into more detail? Yeah, I think it's an interesting journey for each individual to explore what they shouldn't watch. And that comes through, I believe, a conviction from the Holy Spirit to draw someone towards something. So the standard's perfection, like a hint of anything can lead us astray. But that's a pretty bold statement. Uh, for me, it's easy to compare to health. Like when you see her, no sugar, it's hard to go from, you know, occasional sugar to no sugar. Yeah. But I believe God in his grace will extend one thing to shift, one thing to tweak, and then he'll teach us something else to change. And so I also believe, so that's one aspect of it, this progressive holiness aspect. And then the other would be uh, just the realization that each of us have some things that are more tempting for us than another. So for example, uh, we had our men's group, we're talking about two aspects of sin. One was this fruit aspect where these chasing after these pleasures that reflected on the Garden of Eden. And they said, hey, some, some folks chase after pleasure when they find themselves in a bad part. And the others face in, uh, they call it the way of the fig leaves, how Adam and Eve put on fig leaves. And they said they want to cover themselves and they try to hide their sin by something else. And so the way that would break that down would be as um, one person may say, hey, I don't have a problem with cursing or sexuality. That doesn't even, isn't even a temptation for me. Or their temptation may be things like gluttony or fiscal resources like envy. And so they almost can't look through a catalog. You know, their, their temptation would be any magazine that has ads, <laughs> advertisement, shopping. They might not be able to do that. And so each person's toxic influence can be so different. And although I could have went into it, but for many, it just becomes a turnoff. When you give an example, it's like, well, I would never watch that, but I would watch this. For men, I remember back in the day, uh, Cassidy, you haven't heard of these things. They're called Sears catalogs or JCPenney catalogs. And I can remember as a youth pastor way back in the day, we're like, boys, don't be looking at the lingerie section in the Sears catalog. And uh, so the Sears catalog was off limits to middle school boys, you know? And so you get specific, you end up feeling really good or proud that you don't look at this thing. And then, you know, if you go super prudy, someone's like, now you're telling me not to look at a Sears catalog. You're ridiculous. So I would say it's just the Holy Spirit's intersection. And we really know what we shouldn't be looking at. I believe that the Holy Spirit will convict us. It can be an Instagram feed and you can be looking at people working out and you find yourself obsessing over a certain thing. You might be looking at a materialistic site, a business entrepreneurial thing. You're all of a sudden you're obsessed over how to make a few extra dollars and you're obsessing over it. And it's distracting you from what matters the most. So each right. person has their own temptation and that's why. Gotcha. Well, that makes that makes perfect sense because if you if you list something and you know, I don't do that. I could think I was pure. <laughs> yep. Check. Not me. I don't do that. So I must be okay. And then I'll go read nine shades of gray, shades of gray, because you didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Cassidy, in the world that you live in, in the world of social media, of all the inputs and online and phones and all the stuff that you have grown up with, how do you filter out what's a good influence and a bad influence? I mean, with everything being popular a tiktok video goes out and everybody wants to see it and you look at it and go whoa i shouldn't see that how do you how do you do that with all the stuff that you guys have access to yeah i feel like that's such a hard question but i think that a lot of times when i think i noticed that i'm really good at something like instagram for example i'm really good at seeing it and then just wanting to scroll through forever like it's just almost like addicting to be honest yeah I think something that I've noticed that I've done um, is to not get the new app. So something like Snapchat, for example, I didn't get Snapchat for like until it was old and it wasn't as cool anymore. Um, TikTok, I still don't have a TikTok. So just because I know that if I have a TikTok, I will be on TikTok, I will be watching the TikTok. So I think for me, it's almost getting to it before it gets to me. So I know that if I'm on TikTok or if I'm on Instagram or something like that, it's not going to end well because I'm just going to be on there all the time. I'll probably compare to something or there's those TikTok dances. I don't know. I'm kind of glad that I don't know what the TikTok dances are, <laughs> but just things like that. So I think it's almost 
before it gets to it but even because I am on Instagram I think that it's hard to know what what is good and bad and I feel like it's almost I can feel it within my heart if it's something where I can feel like oh I wish that I was like this person um but not in like a good way and I just felt upset about it then I think that would be a time where I might need to go and unfollow that person or something like that so I feel like it's really hard to know, but you can tell if you're off Instagram and you're really unhappy, then I think that's definitely a sign where that's probably not what, not the good influences. For yeah, you. that's a great filter. Uh, you said getting to it before it gets to you. I think that's really wise, just holding it at arm's length, knowing that I got to test it out a little bit before it gets to me and I'm addicted. That's really wise. Um, you, your blog is called pieces of happiness. So why the name? Tell us, tell, yeah. take us down that. So I can't even remember back to why I decided I know why, but I don't know why the why, but um, <laughs> that makes any sense. But I had a first year seminar in my college. So I had an amazing professor and she taught us what blogs were. So that's how I figured out what it was. And I always, I love to make people happy. That's just like my favorite thing to do. So I was trying to think of a way and the blog was the best way, um, but I didn't want to commit to like a huge blog because now I would say I like writing, but in first year, no, I did not like writing at all. So I was like, I don't want to write a blog. So um, pieces of happiness was actually literally pieces of happiness. So I actually brought one to show you because I keep them in my wallet. But so it looks like this. It's literally a square of an index card. And I cut it in half and I put a little quote on it, draw a little picture, and then I put the hashtag, hashtag pieces of happiness 247. And the 247 stands for 24 7 because all of the time. Um, but I literally would just put those around. Um, I put them in restaurants, on mirrors, I put them on bulletin boards, just like little things like that to spread like little pieces of happiness, quite literally. So I think that that's where the name came from. And then I eventually got to writing about service and like it expanded from there. But the name I thought still fit because it's still all little pieces of happiness that you can still share. That is amazing. I, I so wish I would have found one. <laughs> I, that would be so cool if I went, yeah, I got one. <laughs> Yes. That'd have been perfect, but I didn't. So anyway, I'll be I'll be watching for you know remnants of those hanging from the sides of bulletin boards in colleges. So. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there there's a little bit of an intentionality behind this then that, that you intentionally pursue it because it isn't just something that naturally happens. Matt, knowing that side of why she created this blog, how to what advice can you give to those who are really struggling, not only with happiness, but that joy that comes from knowing Christ? So how, how can we intentionally pursue that? Or is it just something magical and mystical that happens, um, which some people believe that when they're not joyful, that must mean there's something wrong with me. What is the intentionality behind it spiritually? Yeah, I think we are on a journey and it's important to recognize our emotions, which are a gift from God. And so when we aren't feeling joy, one of the worst things to do would be to force it in terms of deny what's causing that sadness. Now, we'll talk about in a few weeks, the week before Easter, and I'm really excited about it. We're going to talk about toxic positivity, which is an inability to deal with negative emotions and what causes those. So if you're like, hey, I just got diagnosed with a disease. Life's great. Um, that's not the great deal. You can say, I trust God and I'm going to find good in this. And so on one hand, I think it's tough when you are trying to force a false happiness. However, there is good in all things. And I believe that invitation is in God. When we trust that God is all good and he's in full control, well, that just allows a lot of anxiety that builds up where we can say, this feels terrible. This is a sad situation, but I trust God that good will come out of it. And so I'll sit in this emotion. Um, Another thing that we'll talk about during that verse is, you know, it, the scripture tells us to mourn with those who mourn, not go up to them and say, hey, cheer up, <laughs> hey, read this Bible verse. It says to mourn with those who mourn and to find joy with those who rejoice, to rejoice with those who rejoice. And so I just think that's a beautiful thing. And I, I believe also is important, we keep coming back to this verse, Romans 12, 2, 
which is the renewing of our mind of being patient with the process. And so being joyful isn't natural for some individuals. And so to be more joyful this week than you were last week, that's worth celebrating. <laughs> and so it's not a, uh, it's not an anti message. It's just embrace the emotions and work towards finding joy in life, which I love how Cassidy just wants to inspire people to find yeah. the good, find that all the time. So, so Cassidy, when you, when you left all those little pieces of happiness around, what did you picture happening when someone found it? Um, did you think that their life would change, that their day would get brighter? What was that moment of, oh, that was sweet. What, what, what were you thinking about? I don't know, honestly, what I was thinking. I definitely didn't think it would change their life. I didn't think I had that much power in a little sticky note. But I did hope that if someone was having a bad day or something was going on, that it would just make them smile or something like that. It's like, I feel like I've seen on Facebook all the time, those little things where it's like, you never know if the person behind you had a bad day. So just say hi or something like yeah. that. And I feel like it's the same concept. I'm just not seeing them. So I think it's like, there's so many ways that you're able to just bring a little smile. And I feel like that's what the piece of happiness was. So nothing necessarily that big, but just a small thing that maybe their day could just be a little bit better, have a little bit of smile because I, I feel like I love to send smiles. That's always my favorite thing to say. Like, don't forget to smile or something yeah. like that. <laughs> that's great. And it ties together with what Matt was talking about, that we're not trying to to say, well, because I gave you this piece of happiness, your whole world's going to change. They still have to deal with the cancer diagnosis. They still have to deal with whatever they're dealing with. I'm um, being realistic about that, but knowing that was nice of somebody to do and have that moment and they can ha pass it on. Even if there was, it was years ago, there was a book that came out called The Power of Positive Thinking by a man named Norman Vincent Peale. It was years and years ago, but it was really popular. And one of the things he said was, uh, what Matt described as the thing not to do is if you just, somebody asks you how you are, you always say, I'm great. Even if everything is blowing up in your life. And I'm not sure that, that he got across the idea that no matter if you're great or not great, saying it doesn't change it, but it lets you feel good for that moment. Um, and maybe that would sustain you when the news got worse. So it was really interesting that those pieces of happiness were for that momentary smile that somebody could have. That's great. There was, um, go ahead, Matt. Well, I was gonna say, it's such an interesting tension to manage, I feel. Um, because when you're, when you're a role, so you know when I hit record on Sunday morning, or let, sorry, when I hit record on Thursday or Friday for the Sunday's message, no matter how bad that moment is, I can muster positivity because the world's bigger than my current situation. You know, and I understand that. So even if I'm down or, you know, it's small group time and it's 655 and man, I'm really want to nap. I do know that if I bring energy into that situation. And so I think it's a struggle with authenticity. Right. And so I want to be in my authentic self. So even if I'm bringing a lot of positivity, if someone asks, hey, how are you doing? I'm going to say, you know what? I'm forcing a smile. I'm bringing energy to this place. And at 815, I'm going to crash pretty hard. <laughs> But it isn't an interesting deal. Cassidy, yeah. maybe you resonate with that at times. I mean, now you have the persona of the smile dealer. Like you're dealing smiles. Like, so there's an expectation. So when you're having a bad day, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Yeah, I, there's definitely a lot of pressure, but I think lately I've been letting myself like acknowledge that. And I think um, I actually do this new thing on, well, it's a new thing, but it's been a thing for years and years. But I do, um, I take my Sundays as a Sabbath day and I don't do anything. I just take the time for myself, for God, read my Bible extra and just like self-care, you know? And um, I think that, that that time allows me to be smiling all the other time. Because if I just smile all the time and I don't take a break, then I'm going to not smile anymore because it's just, it's hard to do that. And I've also noticed that if I share with a friend that I'm not feeling great that day, they're normally super great. They'll, they'll talk to me and I'll figure it out. So I definitely think though, that even me, I'm not happy all the time. And I think that that's so easy for someone to look at someone like me and say like, 
how on earth are you happy all of the time? Like that's impossible. But I can promise that I am not happy all the time. And I need time for like breaks, time for myself and just to be able to like acknowledge that I can be sad sometimes, but then be able to work through it so I can be happy the other times. Yeah. And for those of you who uh, want to catch up on her blog, she just wrote about self-care, which was really great. And so many details about what you've gone through to really take care of yourself and make sure you're always charged when you need people to have that smile. It was great. Uh, one of the things you wrote in one of your blogs earlier this year was, um, I want to live in every moment, one day at a time. For someone so young to have that much wisdom is ridiculous. <laughs> Because it takes us so long to really realize that it's just one day at a time. I don't have to live next week. I don't have to live. What if my kids don't grow up? What if I don't get married? What if I don't? What if I don't? And you're always living in the future uncertainty rather than right now. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that philosophy that you live with every day, one day at a time. Well, funny thing is before that, I definitely did not live in the moment. I I had my entire lifetime all the way to retirement. I was early retirement, so ready. I was so focused. I oftentimes thought like, well, if and when my blog gets famous, then I'll put more time into it. So things like that, I really was not living in the moment at all. And I noticed that that was like really stressful and <laughs> not, not fun. And when you're not living in the moment, you miss so much. Like there's so much in life that happens when you're not actually living in the moment. And I think that like focusing on those goals, focusing on retirement, I just missed it. And I was like, I'm missing life by doing that. And I actually got that, I will admit, I got that from reading a book. So it wasn't completely my own thought, but um, it was a book though that older people who were like 90 wrote. So it was like, they were learning this when they were 90. And I was so grateful to be reading this when I was 20 because there's so many years left and I can now live in the moment for this many years and not have to wait until I'm 90 to figure it out. So I think that's been, it's been so great. I say it's life-changing, but I don't know if that's cheesy, but I think that it is, it actually has like really changed my life. Um, like the Sabbath day, taking that time for myself. I do yoga every night, or I try, I don't actually do yoga every night, but I try to do yoga every night, go to bed at a decent time. And I think living in the moment, like, lets me do that. I'm not so stressed with, I have to do my homework from like three to four. It's like, I'll do my homework somewhere in the afternoon, but it doesn't have to be by the minute anymore. And it's just, it's impacted my life in so many ways. And it's made me happier because if a friend says, hey, do you want to get lunch? It's not, oh, well, my schedule says I have to do homework right now. Yeah, let's go get lunch and let's talk and see how you're all doing, so. That's great. Man, and that, all of that is biblical. Sabbath, rest, oh. self-care, one day at a time, right? Yeah, I love that. Especially the concept of margin in creating that space where you have that. And so all the positive things you're doing, like you had to lose sleep, well, you're fine because you bank sleep. And so if somebody needs you late at night, you can stay up one night. Mm -hmm. And that's just very wise, that idea of creating that buffer. If you had to give up something, it's not a, a catastrophe because you have excess. That's great. Yeah. Uh, one more question before we close out, um, Cassidy. Um, there was one thing on your blog that you said that really hit home with me. Uh, it was during the pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, which you know we're all hopefully just coming out of. Um, and you said that you realized that having time with a friend was a real gift that, that you didn't have anymore because, and, and you felt the loss and how special that was. Talk a little bit about that one day at a time, but being thankful for these little things, these little pieces of happiness. Um, so tell us where you were when you wrote that in, uh, in your mind and, and, and how you reached that place of such thankfulness for little things. Yeah, I think one of the main things I took out of the pandemic, so many, I actually wrote a blog, there's like 20 things that I took, but um, one of the things was I learned I am 100% a people person, so I just, I need to be around people, and I think that's where I really realized that meeting with a friend uh, for like lunch, for dinner, or anything like that, so like that's so filling, and that really for both me and my friend, I'm just able to leave that so happy, like, and just be so grateful.
but I noticed before the pandemic and honestly even now because I kind of forgot a little bit about that thing so it was kind of nice that you brought that back up and I was like oh yes remembering that time when it wasn't able to do that as much anymore but it's just so easy to pull out your phone when you just don't have anything else to say or there's just like a five second silence. So it's like, oh, I'll pull out my phone, but you miss so much when you do that. And I've even noticed now being back at school, I've seen where we're at dinner or something and my son pulls out their phone and I immediately pull my phone out right after. And I'm like, no, no, that's not what I wanna do. So I, I've, if I'm close enough with a friend, I'll say, hey, can we not pull out our phones right now and like really talk? But if I'm not as close, sometimes that's a little bit harder to ask if we can have some more conversation. But going back to that idea of the little things, I think that knowing, like acknowledging the little things, that changes so much. And my best friend, she did a podcast with me and we were able to talk about the little things. And that was sort of the thing that really brings her happiness. And that was so great to just see from her perspective how the little things work in her life and the thing that comes to mind specifically when thinking about the little things is really letting yourself smile if there is something that even if you don't see it it's just in your mind just letting yourself smile like that's a good thing and that will change your mind sometimes because I think that's how science works or something I don't know but um there there's been times where I've been in class or like walking outside around people and I just burst into this huge smile because like something funny comes into my mind that my friend might have done earlier or just like random things like that. And I know before I would be like, oh no, what are people thinking that I'm just randomly smiling right now? But I mean, really, it doesn't matter what other people are thinking. It's that you're able to have that happiness and that little thing even though I didn't see it it was in my mind really brought me so much joy in that moment and it stayed with me for a long time so I think just letting yourself see the little things like even on a run the other day this one man as I was running by his house he was gardening and he just shouted hello and it was just that's the smallest thing but it made me smile for the next mile or two because that was just so cool that he said hi while he was gardening like So I think those little things really just, they have such a huge impact and it's so cool when you're actually able and let yourself acknowledge them. Yeah. And I know Matt, uh, Matt can uh, echo your words about getting his energy from people because I've seen him light up, even though it was a long, exhausting day uh, of ministry for him and him getting on these calls at night and just lighting up because the people just energize him. I also know that he has funny thoughts because sometimes I find him grinning when we're in a meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We've talked about that. My daughter, when she was growing up, she would all of a sudden start laughing. And we'd say, what are you doing? And she said, I just told myself a joke. So it's like, okay. (laughs) So So you heard me say on Sunday, this is just worth me sharing, that (laughs) Quinn will act out whatever she watches for like days. And so I got this, well, actually more like a month. She literally, because I went to check her, tuck her in. Like she does this whole, we do uh, my, she goes, you know, the drill, whenever she goes to bed at 830 and I need to go in and tuck her in and you know all that before I go to bed even if she's sleeping so I walked in at five minutes till nine and she's still awake and I'm like what are you doing awake she goes um just replaying the movie I'm creating in my mind (laughs) and so Carrie sent me this text it'll take me a second to find it but it was so funny and um is this about the tears yes (laughs) she said um (laughs) I get so many texts from Carrie this is taking me too long to find but I want to definitely read it because it was worth reading exactly. I got it. You ready? Yes. All right. Uh, Carrie wrote, Mom, that, that Quinn said this to her. Mom, you know how sometimes I walk around the house acting out characters I made up in my head? Well, today I had a very sad scene and I was able to squeeze some real tears out. I'm a real actress now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So not only should we think about happy thoughts, we can also think about terrible dark thoughts in order to shed a tear that's important for a scene. 
Yeah, exactly. Whatever works for the scene, right? <laughs> okay. One of, the, one of the themes that we've said in the series that I think is really important is just minding our mind. Like, what are the things that are ruminating when we hear a negative comment or we read something that's negative? Where should we take our minds versus allowing our minds to take us mm -hmm. down this journey? And I just wrote down that we could intentionally create a an album to look at a video playlist to repeat in our minds when we're finding that sadness. I, I really appreciate yeah. you sharing that, Cassie. Like, yeah. Whenever we're on mission trips, I always tell people, take photos with your mind. Like throughout the day, if there's something that really moved you, just hit the record button, capture that clip, 10 or 15 seconds so that you can dwell on it, and ruminate on it, and just right. allow that to carry you through the rest of the trip. And even that little, I see that guy saying hi to you, and I see you smiling the next mile. And that's- yeah, exactly a clip that you can draw back to when, when life feels dark or humanity's fallen and the world's a, the world's a mess. You can hold on to that. Yeah. Uh, do you have a playlist that you turn to music wise or are there books that you return to when you need that kind of positivity? I, I actually have a, I think my playlist changed often, but right now my playlist is called refresh. Um, so it's sort of like a refresh of things and it has tons of Christian songs in there. I have like, if there's something good from church or from the women's conference we just attended, I definitely added songs in. So yeah. just like any song that it just makes me happy, I usually put it in there because it does change my mood after listening to it. Yeah. Isn't it funny? Cause sometimes you don't want to press play. It's almost like I'm in such a bad mood. I don't feel like pressing play on this. And then if you press play, <laughs> it does affect you in a positive way. It's like cleaning the shower for me. It's a mess. I don't feel like doing it, but once it's clean, it's so much better. I'm glad you did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, we're winding down. Is there any last thoughts that you guys have for this idea of minding our mind, of making sure we're lining up those toxic influences where they belong rather than in our, in our hearts? How about you, Cassidy? Any last thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. That it's so hard to have last thoughts, I feel like. But um, I think like minding your mind, it's just so important to remember to spend time with God. And I think like the way that, where I find my happiness, I actually started writing my blog out and I didn't want to really write about Jesus in there as much because talking about the future all the time, I was like, well, once it gets more popular, then I'm going to throw Jesus in and all of these people, they're not going to know. And then Jesus will be there. But um, really taking that step back and I was writing my blogs and I was like, there is no way to write about happiness without Jesus. Like I, this happiness that I'm experiencing, like I just can't share about it without sharing about Jesus. So um obviously now Jesus is all over my blog because that's how it is. But um, I think like that's so important to know that you really need to let Jesus into your life if you want to find that joy and like letting him in, but spending time with him, like my refresh playlist, that's all Christian songs, just like things like that is where I really do find the joy. And even if it feels like it can be from somewhere else, usually that joy or happiness even it just doesn't last as long so I think finding that joy is it really comes from Jesus and all that he's done for us that's awesome there you go you, you said there's no way to write about happiness without writing about Jesus amen on that Matt you have anything uh, better to add than that <laughs> not better just different yeah just different <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think there is, I appreciate what Cassidy's saying because it's almost looking at the source of that thing we appreciate. You know, if you're today, it just felt heavenly outside. It smelled like spring having the door open. And it's important to take it one next level, I think, of just acknowledging the creator who creates that. And so there are triggers to go higher up, even if it's a song that you love. I always think, even if it's not a Christian musician, I like, God, thank you for giving this person the gift mm -hmm. to express that, even if they deny it. Yeah. You know, I always think it's fun. I can buy something for my kids, but they don't thank me every time they use it. But I know where that thing came from. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't need them to acknowledge it. Um, I think in the topic of of happiness, I would say that the reverse is true. When we find ourselves unhappy uh, regularly, I think it's time to re-examine our influences, what we've been 
absorbing in that if you get enough negativity, it, we don't realize how negative we've become. And so it is helpful to inventory that with either a close friend or a spouse or your child and just say, hey, how am I doing right now in terms of negativity or positivity? What am I doing well? What could I do better? And these are vulnerable questions. But if we don't like the response, rather than being defensive, we could just inventory what we are doing, either what we're taking in or what we're not putting in. Yeah. Um, the absence of good things results in non-good and negative things happens. Garbage in, garbage out. It's just a very true statement. And so when we find ourselves not in a place of life that we're pleased with, we don't know that if the trajectory continues, it goes towards a better place. It's just helpful to examine that. I think the same also would be one last thought is similar to the message, which I said so many times we look at this as like, oh gosh, what do I have to cut out now? Or what do I have to say? Now I have to give up my favorite artists, right? When I was a youth pastor, they would have CD burnt or actually cassette tape burning events where this youth pastor would talk about, you got to get the sin out of your life. You want the sin out of your life. You got to get the influences out of your life. Burn your tapes. And I'd be like, I get that out in time because that kid just threw away some gold. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not that bad when he just threw away. I want that. Yeah. And so um, looking at it through the lens of not, oh my gosh, I have to get rid of all my stuff or burn my CDs or burn my movies or burn my books, which maybe you should. I don't want to you know, say that's not true in some regard, but also just having this mindset of what you'll get from that, you know, yeah. what you'll find, the joy, the peace, the happiness by uh, replacing these toxic things yes it's painful at first to do without them it's not long you'll enjoy the benefits of a better outlook yeah there's some psychological studies that talk about everybody almost every human being when they're told they need to change will always think they're going to lose something mm -hmm. when in reality change can also be that you're gaining something so on that note, I think I've gained a lot of wisdom from you, young lady. Thank you so much. Um, it just, just watching you smile and knowing that that's what you want to give away every day of your life is just makes my world feel better. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you all for tuning into our podcast. Uh, in our notes section, you'll see a link to Cassidy's uh, blog. I would encourage all of you to jump on that. Um, and she has quite a few on there already. So go all the way back and start from the beginning and you can see how much she's growing in her pursuit of happiness. So thank you so much for joining in and we'll see you next week on our Experience Christian Church podcast. Thanks again. <music>